we're in the RV capital, really, of the world. It makes more than 50% of the RVs in the world. This area right here. John McGivern's Main Streets thanks the following underwriters. Remember when the American dream was being able to say, I made that, I built that. Wouldn't it be great if your kids and grandkids chose a career that provides that kind of pride with good pay, but without a ton of student loan debt? A four-year degree isn't the only path to success. We need talented people to make and build. On Main Streets everywhere, skilled work isn't a thing of the past, it's a bright future. In southeastern Wisconsin, there's a village with something for everyone. It's everywhere you look, on every street, behind any door you open, and we want to share it with you. You just gotta see Greendale. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Plum Media and the Friends of PBS Wisconsin. Thanks, friends. Cause these are main streets. Something about a hometown speaks to me. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. The heart and soul of communities right here. On these main streets. I'm in Goshen, Indiana, which is a town with a population of 35,000 people. It's on the edge of Amish country. In fact, Goshen is the manufacturing hub that relies on Amish craftsmanship to help build their products. It's also known for Goshen College and a thriving Hispanic community. Goshen is in Elkhart County on the northern border of Indiana. It's about 25 miles southeast of uh, South Bend and 50 miles northwest of Fort Wayne. Emmy, we're in Goshen, Indiana. I love it. Yeah, let's talk about the um, name Goshen. People may have heard of it, but let's talk about the history of the name. So the land of Goshen might be familiar from the Bible. Now the Yankee settlers who founded this area, they actually identified with the Israelites from the Old Testament. Yes, because um, in the Old Testament, this was the Israelites' first land of freedom. Exactly. So when they settled here, they, it kind of mirrored what happened in the Bible for them. So Goshen too. I like that take for yeah. sure. And you know, you mentioned RVs yeah. here. In fact, it's nicknamed the RV capital of the world. We've seen them all over the place. Yeah. That goes all the way back to the 1930s and a gentleman named Wilbert Schultz. He bought a small trailer company. 10 years later, he was such a marketing whiz. He was the leader in his industry. It's unbelievable. I think um, we deserve an RV for next season. Traveling the Midwest, I think we should go look for an RV. Wow. Good idea, yes? Best show idea yet. Ever. The RV Hall of Fame is about eight minutes from here. Um, but why would I go there when I'm here and I can see how they're built? Come on. We're in the yard where it all begins here at Dynamax. We are. Forest River really is the company that has Dynamax in the area where half of the RVs in the world are built. Well, in the U.S., in the US. 80, 85% are built in what we call the the Michiana region, which is the southern Michigan, northern Indiana region. Here is the beginning of, of a Class C RV. All the C stands for, it's the cab chassis. So when it comes in, it's the front cab and an empty rail, that's it. Yeah. Is there a typical buyer for any of these? Typically a motorhome is something you work up to. So you're in a tent from camper, a tent. Yeah. from a pop-up, yeah. then you're in a travel trailer. COVID changed all of that. Really? And so we had people who have never camped before in their life that are buying our biggest, most expensive vehicle and their first time campers, which keeps me awake at night sometimes because there's a lot to know. Like you're buying a vehicle, you're buying a house, you're buying a power generation system, a sewer system, yeah. a solar system, like there's a lot. Yeah. What's interesting about RVs is they're built inside out. So unlike a house where you might put the walls on and build everything in, we build the insides first. Is this the bedroom? This would be the bed. This is the, bed. Uh, and this is the water tank. It's got like a 95 gallons of fresh water on board. So after everything is up and running, yeah. 
they'll then bring the walls in and the roof. So they'll come through and they'll paint everything. We have some that are four stage mass, so they'll do this about four times after first wow. color. Every vehicle we build typically comes with anywhere from one to three slide outs. So when the bed slide comes in, this platform here will touch against the drawers. Most of our M2s come with a washer and dryer option. Yeah. Bathroom again, Corian, solid surface. Yeah. That'll give you an idea of what it looks like with the slides in. And you can see everything's pretty much usable. Fridge is accessible, the bathroom's accessible. I traded in my SUV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here at 101 North Main Street, you'll find the Elkhart County Courthouse. It was built in 1870 and redesigned in the early 1900s to the beautiful Renaissance style that you see today. You may be wondering why Goshen is the county seat here when there's a larger city named Elkhart. Well, if you look on a map, you'll see that Goshen is smack dab in the center of the county. Location, location, location. So you know I ride a scooter, and you know, someone who rides a scooter, you know what they dream of in the middle of the night? Take a look. Oh. It started off as two guys in the back of this building. We didn't have the whole building, kind of in a garage, just building one bike to pay for the next bike. This is really what put us on the map. This DNA here, this fuel tank, this aesthetic, you know, we've built about a thousand of these, and I don't think any one of them is exactly the same. Really? There's just so many possibilities you can do. Yeah. It's designed specifically for country twisty roads or urban travel. It's not yeah. designed for the interstate. Janus, how'd that name come about? Janus is the Roman god of beginnings and ends. He, he's usually represented with two faces, one looking to the past and one to the future. And we really felt like that's what our bikes are trying to do. So yeah. the perfect representation for us. We encourage our owners to do service work on them themselves and maintenance work. The carburetor, you can just take it apart, clean it, put it back together, it and you're good to go. And back we have on. videos on all that stuff. People who buy your bikes, what, what are they used to riding and why do they come to you? I can't really tell you the typical owner because they're so eclectic. Yeah. Uh, new riders, but a lot of people that want something a little different and they're stable. And you're in Goshen, Indiana. Yeah, Goshen. <laughs> I didn't know where Goshen was, kind of found Goshen through riding. And then because of where our vendors are, welding, laser cutting, any machine shops, every dotted every square mile. It just all kind of coalesced. And there's also a big Amish community willing to work with two guys that wanted frames made, for example. Yeah. I don't think we could do what we do anywhere else. They're really beautiful, these motorcycles you have coming out of that back room. That back room, thank you very much. If only. And I found it in Goshen, Indiana. I am outside the Elkhart County 4-H Fairgrounds. There has been a county fair in Goshen since 1851. In fact, it's one of the largest county fairs in the country. So we've all heard of 4-H, but can you tell me what the 4-H's actually stand for? I am a proud 4-H alumna of 12 years. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health for better living. 4-H is a national youth organization. They focus on citizenship and life skills. And here in Elkhart County, over 4,000 kids participate. It's like coming home. Begonias look fantastic. Yeah. We're talking quilt gardens. This isn't the only one in town. We have 17 of them. 17? Throughout the Elkhart County. This is a major initiative. Absolutely. And how did this happen? It came up as an initiative for tourism. We get visitors from all over the world even. This was a really good idea. We're going to make a garden out of this that pattern. That is exactly right. Out of a quilt pattern. Yes, a quilter has come up with some of these designs. Yes. We have the patterns available to the participants. Are flowers. there squares that you can look at and say, Im Possible. This ain't gonna work. Uh, yes, once the design is chosen, there's a review group and there are nine of us. Most of us are master gardeners and we decide if it would be something that would be usable, yeah. easy to do or not. Yeah. And then the choice comes down as to what flowers. It normally takes two days to plant and it's about 10 to 15 people that plant it. Yeah. After that, you're looking at watering. There is fertilizing, there is weeding. There are all these things that have to be taken care of from May 30th, and then our last day is September the 15th. 
and if the garden looks great, we're going to leave this one. Yes, because we're September leave this one. Uh, 14th is tomorrow. That is correct. So you've got two days. Which, if it didn't look good on the 15th, then pull. Okay. Pull. You? Are Absolutely. You? Now pull. you're scaring me, no, Karine. No, pull. That's it. That's it. There are some flowers that haven't had a problem. Like, what kind of flower is going to give you a problem? Uh, we've had impatient problems hmm. in the past. I've got that problem as well. Just so you. <laughs> <laughs> and volunteerism is really, really important. That's that's a major part. The These key. would not be here. We have probably over 200 volunteers. Wow, there's a plaque. It'll right. tell you what it looked like. Right. It'll tell you what it is. This actually depicts where gardens are. Uh -huh. uh, this right here is the name of the garden. Yeah. And then these are all the flowers. And it gives you the reference and say, oh, that's what I would like to do. These are the locations. It's so good. Scan the QR code. It'll give you directions Absolutely. and everything. Absolutely. Oh. And since we're here at the 4-H fair, if you look, yeah. in the middle is a clover for 4-H. Oh. OK, I would have thought of that if you'd given me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Indiana is home to one of the largest Amish populations in the entire country. I'm on the Pumpkin Vine Trail, which heads east out of Goshen and goes through the Amish communities of Middlebury and Shipshawana. In fact, Amish craftspeople who work manufacturing jobs in Goshen take this trail to and from work every day. This is their commute. And if you take a look at this trail, I'm kind of jealous of their commute. Beautiful. We're at a Radio Horizonte. Yes, see. Sí. And you're Manny Cortez. Yes, I am. What is your name? John McGivern. John? See, sí. McGivern. Oh, it's yeah. a hard to it's a, it's pronounce hard. that one. This community knows you. De donde eres? El Salvador. El Salvador? I, I, I'm born in El Salvador. How long have you lived in Goshen? Uh, 22 years. 22 years. Yes. And how long has this radio station been uh, there? Six years. So is it a mixture of talk and music? Yes. And it's a bilingual station? Yes, there is. There's a large Latino population in Goshen, yes? Yes, the uh, Latino population is close to 53, 55% like uh, population. We are from different countries, Venezuela, Colombia, Honduras, El Salvador. Obviously, Mexico is the more uh, big population right yeah. here. How do you create unification in the Latino community? Well, uh, well from all the uh, diversity. Uh, Tell me about your culture, I, I want to learn. Tell me a little bit about you. I'm the host of a TV show okay. called John McGivern's Main Street. And this week we are shooting in your community of Goshen, Indiana. My employer, uh, I work for a Lipper component. They give me opportunity to go to the Ivy Tech College. So okay. uh, Goshen College give me the opportunity to learn more uh, about education for people like me, you know. I am really, really blessing. Yeah. And this is all volunteer? This radio station is run by volunteers. Yes. Everything you see here was built for volunteers. Yeah. Yes, and they can bring information about what happened in our community, what happened in your church, what happened in your neighbor next. Yeah. Who needs help? It's no matter who you are, it's no matter where you're coming from, yeah. the radio station is open for you. Señoras y señores, pues, como les decía, Manny Cortez y... John McGivern. Gracias. Goshen College might be small, but they have a big reputation for their environmental sustainability programs. Besides offering various environmental majors, they have built native prairie restorations, installed solar panels, and they purchase 100% of their electricity from renewable sources. And because of all of this, they are recognized as one of America's greenest colleges. We're on the campus of Goshen College, and this is Gilberto Perez. Pleasure. Hola. Hola. How are you? Hola. Tal? Muy bien. Yeah, <laughs> Doing good. great. Good. Um, so um, yeah. talk about the history of this place. This college was founded in 1894, mm -hmm. and Mennonites have uh, been connected to this college as they founded it as a way of saying to the church community and the community that we are here to offer education. and so. Initially, there were a lot of Mennonite students, who were 23% or so at this point. But the Mennonite church focused on peace, and they focused on justice and social justice. And as our teaching faculty engaged, they're about serving others and being compassionate and being good stewards of the things that we have. And there are many of us, and we all can belong here, and we can be a part of this community as we find support, we find engagement, and we get you through to the degree and to that profession that you're 
call that you're right. wanting to do or wanting to be engaged in? All um, dealing and, and being based in Mennonite values. Yeah, we're a private Christian liberal arts college, and all of us can be connected to earth, connected to living out our faith as individuals here, and then exploring and finding the things that actually connect us to being better human beings. How did you find your way here? My dad came in the 80s to Goshen College to study in the Hispanic Ministries program. Met my wife in Virginia, we lived in Puerto Rico, and we moved to Goshen uh, about 21 years ago now. You're quite involved in the community as well. You're uh, a city councilman? I'm a city councilman. We want to make this a, a stronger community, a better community, and a place where individuals say to one another, that's my town, yeah. that's my city. Right. I belong there. If you look here, this piece is a model of That's it. your piece. That's we stood in front of that piece earlier today. Yeah. Broken Shield. You're right. Yeah. And it's become a real iconic piece. Whenever I make a sculpture, especially that one, since it was early in my career, you wonder if it's going to have lasting value. But it's maybe more popular now than when I put it up. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. Th these are all the materials you work with as an artist. Right. This part of the country, Indiana, northern Indiana, is very industrial. So there's a lot of scrap metal around. Nice. I work mainly with aluminum and stainless steel. So do you work with what's found or do you try to go find? Uh, sometimes both. Does size intimidate at all? No, I, I am more comfortable working large than small. So my style has grown and changed slowly over time. But I've always been focused on creating and I couldn't go without being in my studio a week or so. Yes, yes. I got to do something. <laughs> you have to go to work. Yeah. yeah. And in a space that, where, where else are you going to get this space? That's right. Yeah, this is a former boiler building. And this is an old bag factory. Right. Uh, you have to know that every time somebody says the old bag factory, I think of Mrs. Chan Chung, who lived down the block from us. Okay. <laughs> we as kids were like, she's an old bag. So <laughs> I hear that and I think of Bartlett Avenue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just sure. so you know. Yeah. The old bag factory is just that, a renovated factory built in 1896 as the Cosmo Buttermilk Soap Company. In 1910, it became the Chase Bag Factory, and they made everything from burlap sacks to the paper strips you find in Hershey Kisses. Well, now it's a shopping destination, home to artisans, retail, restaurants, and more. If someone had told me that there was this kind of shopping in Goshen on Main Street, I would have brought a bigger suitcase. So cool. Come on. How are you? Good to see you. Take a look. Three floors, beautiful mid-century antiques, art from all over the world. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do some shopping. No, what, no, we have no. to go. I'll be back. Do you know how to eat Indian food? I don't. All right, so what you wanna do, the rice is our base. So you wanna put a little rice on your main plate. That's the base? How long have you had this restaurant? Eight years. Eight years. And had you had an Indian restaurant before? No. No. But you had recipes that you wanted that we want to share with the public. We used to, yep. We used to cook at home. Me and her, she knows I love cooking. Yeah, he loves then cooking. We just... A little bit of the sauce and the meat. So today you have a lamb korma. That's the onion sauce with, with a cream in it. Indian restaurant in Goshen. First thing they say, I really was wondering if it was going to be authentic. And I'm like, yeah. I am from Punjab. I speak Punjabi. That's my mother tongue. He's from Haryana, the next straight right next to the Punjab. Good. And then you can kind of scoop it up with the bread. Oh. The traditional way would be that. Is, is to yeah, eat it kind with of cook it with your nun. <laughs> no, you, you'll get a fork also. <laughs> our expectations are high on our foods. With our cuisine, you either like it or you don't. See, there's once no they man. come in the door, once they have it, then, then they change their minds. They they'll recommend be back. somebody else, they back, and they, yeah. they send people over, OK. Yeah. Go there and try it. It's not spicy. People think Indian food perception and is yeah, so the perception spicy. was, oh, it's spicy, it's curry. However people want it, mild, medium spices. This is all here is mild. When somebody asks for some different, more spices or medium, we do it here. Do you like it spicier? Uh, medium spicy. Medium spicy. Yeah, I used to eat spicy a lot, but nice age and I eat spicy. <laughs>
Yeah, just kidding. It can be spicy if you choose it spicy. Spicy is about a little bit about this much. And it's extra hot chilies. Okay, that's fine then. Yeah. This is good enough for that. That's order. good enough for us. Yeah. But it's great home food, you know? Everything is made here. Everything is made fresh. And I think that really goes with what Goshen is. And pretty healthy. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the right way That's to eat your food. That's delicious. Really smooth and very yummy. Thank you so much. Right. So glad we stopped by. <laughs> Have you ever been writing out a card or a sign and realized everything you want to say is not going to fit in that space? Well, that's the backstory here with this theater. It opened as the Jefferson Theater in 1905. Decades later, when they put up a new sign, they realized all the letters for Jefferson Theater were not going to fit. So, fewer letters, Goshen Theater. They just renamed it. It's pretty smart if you ask me. Today, this is truly the centerpiece for arts and culture right here on Main Street. That building has been sitting on that corner by the courthouse since 1939. Do you know what purpose it served? I'll give you a hint. It's a great place to keep an eye on Main Street. This little building behind me is the Goshen Police Booth. Now, it was built by the Works Progress Administration during the Great Depression, and it really served as the home base for police officers right here on Main Street so they could keep law and order. Today, it's managed by the Goshen Historical Society, but have no fear, Goshen, because I'm on duty today. Running perpendicular to Main Street in downtown, there's Washington Street, then Jefferson Street, then Madison Street, then Monroe Street. Named after the first, third, fourth, and fifth presidents, which kind of begs the question, what did the city planners have against John Adams? Just want to know. I'm on my way into Venturi to have pizza. It's a very popular pizza place. It's a Neapolitan pizza, meaning that there's rules and laws around serving. I'll follow the rules if I can have a slice. So there's some sort of Neapolitan test that you've got to go through to yes. be certified as a Neapolitan mm -hmm. pizza making restaurant. Yes. And it deals with the oven? With what ingredient? What does it deal All with? All of it. When we opened, we were the only certified Neapolitan pizzeria in Indiana. That's, right. That's no longer true, it's but not. there's not that many. It's proven if you're around for almost 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and about the building, yeah. we painted it black and white. Yeah. Because all Neapolitan pizzerias in Naples are painted black and white. <laughs> it's good. So should we watch somebody cook something? Or? Yeah. That would be great. Are you, are you gonna do something? I am not. <laughs> That's not my specialty. I love that you were so sure of that. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Johnny. Johnny. I'm Brian. Brian, good to see you. You gonna do it for me? Let's do it. Are you? So Neapolitan dough, it's double zero flour. Does um, it have to rise? At least 24 hours. So I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna work my way out clockwise. Because that's a rule. That is a rule, yeah. This is our fresh mozzarella that we make every day. Just enough there. Uh -huh. You want every bite to be different. To be different? Yeah. Yeah. This is the margarita? This is the margarita. So and this, this is the most popular one in the house, yes? Yes, yes, absolutely. And you make it fit the paddle, yes? Mm-hmm. Yep. It should be about 90 seconds to stretch oh. it and top it, 90 seconds to cook it. There's some heat in there, yes? Yeah. It'll be around 800 to 900. It's warm right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do less. On a busy night, you know, we're doing 200, 250 pizzas. Everything going in there. That was the fastest pizza. <laughs> that was yeah. kind of remarkable. Looks delicious. Cheers. To you, thanks. Yes. Mm. And the concept that every bite is different, Here's some with just the sauce. Yeah. It's great. And then you get the crust to finish off, which is delicious on its own. Mm-hmm. Delicioso. Delicioso. I had no idea the kind of culture and the kind of craftsmanship we find in Goshen. I agree. I love the vibe. I just didn't get enough time here. Me neither. It's great. So we're staying. <laughs> On these main streets. Northern Indiana is home to one of the largest omnia. <laughs> and a gentleman named Wilbert Shoot. Schult? <laughs> <laughs> it's in his first season of, of Drivers Jaja. It's 
not gonna happen, you guys. I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh, okay. John McGivern's Main Streets thanks the following underwriters. Remember when the American dream was being able to say, I made that, I built that. Wouldn't it be great if your kids and grandkids chose a career that provides that kind of pride with good pay, but without a ton of student loan debt? A four-year degree isn't the only path to success. We need talented people to make and build. On Main Streets everywhere, skilled work isn't a thing of the past, it's a bright future. In southeastern Wisconsin, there's a village with something for everyone. It's everywhere you look, on every street, behind any door you open, and we want to share it with you. You just gotta see Greendale. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Plum Media and the Friends of PBS Wisconsin. Thanks, friends. Okay, I just want to get it. <laughs> well, because I know if it was me, I would be like, damn it, why didn't they sit? Take fine, it? fine. There you go. She'll let anything hang off my face. <laughs>